All right, hello everyone and welcome to another exciting FotoG video. My name is Artem Pisarevsky, your post-production instructor from FotoG.com and you probably know me from doing workshops uh, monthly on our Pro Club program, but this time we're going to do something completely different uh, because the guys from Datacolor actually sent us a product to review. It is the Spider X Pro color calibration device for your monitor and that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to go through some of the characteristics, uh, some of the build quality stuff and also the software and the actual calibration of your monitor, everything in the same run. So without further ado, I think we should definitely start by actually looking into the box and seeing what the product is about. So the product comes in actually quite a simple setup. I had a couple booklets of user manual there but i've gotten rid of them because i've already used this to kind of review it over some period of time and basically we have the product here uh, in front of me it comes in a one single piece which you can split so you can get the counterweight and the actual calibration device into two pieces then you can extend the cord which is really nice and hang it over your monitor and you can adjust the cord of course uh, depending on the size of your monitor so quite great uh, I had some issues with the label here it started coming off but it's quite a minor thing compared to everything else so yeah basically the device is here and we just have a one USB cord and nothing else uh, just some starting quick start instructions and uh, that's pretty much it. So I think we what we should do now is take this product and actually hook it up to our computer and see what it can do. So let's do that right now. So over here we can see the Spider X Pro application window. On the right we have some interactive help which is going to be quite helpful throughout the calibration process. And in the middle we have some guidelines what we have to do before we start the calibration. So it tells you to warm up your monitor before uh, doing the calibration for correct results. Then making sure that you don't have any direct light shining on your monitor. Uh, then you have to set your uh, monitor settings to default or even better do a factory reset on your display which is going to be even better and then you have to also make sure that your spider x pro is connected so quite easy settings uh, nothing nothing really special but might be helpful for beginners who haven't done any kind of calibration before so that's this is really good uh, knowledge to have on hand so let's click next and over here we have the display technology tab. This was a little bit uh, interesting. I haven't seen this before, uh, but here you kind of have to do some research on your own display. You have to Google it and see in the technical specifications what kind of uh, backlight you have. So I did mine and it said that I have the wide LED because this display has quite a wide uh, color gamut or I mean color space as it has 100% sRGB so I chose wide LED and that was basically it. I don't know what's the technical reason behind this and you have actually a link saying for further information please click here you could uh, check that and it's going to give you additional information but for now I'm going to leave this uh, like this and we are again going to click next to go into our calibration settings so here we have three options and they are all listed here and on the right you can see the description for each of them so recalibration being uh, a calibration process after you've already done a Spider X calibration on this exact display once before or how many times, it, it doesn't really matter. But if you've done a calibration with Spider X, uh, you could use the recal because it already has some sort of settings stored in the profile. 
so you just have to recalibrate part of the things not uh, the complete profile uh, then we have the check calibration which is going to measure the accuracy quite quickly compared to for example full calibration so you could do that in a hurry uh, when you just have to make sure that the colors are correct and if they aren't it's going to instruct you to use recalibration to make sure that everything is correct but if you have time on your hands you should always go for the full calibration to make sure that everything is nice and dandy so that's that let's go to our next tab here we have the room light measurement tab so you're just going to place your spider x pro on a table to measure the room light this is actually quite good because it's going to take the dimness or brightness of your uh, room into account when it's going to adjust the brightness level of the display so here it's going to now it's measured the light and it's going to tell you the recommended target settings and I was about to just uh, set the settings that I've said before but let's go with the recommended settings just for the sake of of this review so let's click next and now it's going to just show you that you have to place your spider x pro here so let's hang it right in the middle of our display like this and after that we are going to just click next to start the display calibration so right now it's going to just uh, start measuring the colors it will take a while after that it's going to give us this brightness bar and you have to adjust your display brightness until you hit the green mark on the left so right now I opened my display settings on my physical controls then I just pulled down the brightness around I think I pulled it down almost 70% so it made the display quite quite dim you can't see it here but uh, I have I have you I you have to trust me on this because there is no good way to show it other than just tell it and then I'm going to click update whenever I adjusted the brightness and once it's in the middle of that green mark I'm going to click continue and it's going to finish the measuring of the colors so once it's finished calibrating you have this prompt to name your profile so I'm just going to rename it as my main monitor and then you can set your calibration reminder uh, if you want the software to actually remind you in a set period of time uh, to recalibrate your monitor which is actually really good because I uh, personally tend to forget things so that's that and once you're once you have saved your display profile then you're going to click next and there we have our result for our calibration my colors went from cool and desaturated to a little bit more vibrant and warmer I really think that this was an easy process compared to how big of a difference I got in the end. The only thing I haven't done before is the LED backlight uh, research. That was the most difficult thing in the whole process. But otherwise, I think there is nothing really bad I could say about the product, which is really good. Uh, that's what I would expect from a device like this. It did everything quite well and simply instructed you throughout the whole calibration process and gave you some tips how to improve your calibration result uh, while doing the actual calibration. So it's really difficult to say anything bad about product this good uh, because as a professional or as a beginner it provides you all the information and all these steps to do a correct calibration on your display 
so I would see this easily as a daily driver for many photographers and many retouchers. So I think as the verdict it's a really good product and I would definitely consider it as a daily driver also in my photography career. So one thing which I forgot to mention about the calibration settings is the current target settings which you can change on your own. Uh, I have for example pulled down a little bit of my white point, it went way too warm on the first calibration. Uh, I think it might be also a display kind of... Uh, it's, it's dependent on the display you have. And also you can adjust the brightness on your own if you want to, but as I said, it's going to make it really dark. So if you like it a bit brighter than normal, then you can set it to do not adjust. And then it has the room light and gamma as well, which I have said to recommend it. So that's also quite a useful thing to know when you're doing the calibration. All right, that's it for the review. Hopefully you enjoyed watching this. My name is Artem Pisarevsky. Uh, make sure you check out our other stuff on this channel. Make sure you like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you dislike it, and I will see you in the next video. Take care, everyone.